Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, that last song I believe must be one of Ann's favorites, isn't it? I thought it was. I thought it was. Praise God. And Ed, you did sound pretty good. I heard you all the way over here. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. That's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at Psalm 118, verse number 8. Uh, I'm sure that this is a scripture I've probably used before, but uh, as Dr. S.M. Lockridge said one time to one of his parishioners uh, who dropped by and said to him, uh, said, Dr. Lockridge, you preached that before. He said, yes, and if it didn't bear repeating, I shouldn't have preached it the first time. And uh, so, uh, I don't know why, but God has brought this to my heart again uh, this evening, and I want us to look at it for just a moment. Uh, Marta's got all the dates. All right. Well, that's good. But anyway, uh, if there's ever been a time that we need to trust God, we're living in those times right now. And I think sometimes as children of God, we need to be reminded of who we need to place all our trust in. Because there's so many things in the world today to get our attention and there's so many things in the world today to draw us away from the God that we love. And uh, we ought to fall deeperly, or deep, deeper, excuse me, in love with Him every day of our lives. But I want to bring you a message that I've titled, Trust God No Matter What. Now, somebody says, no matter what, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, no matter what may come your way, just trust God. Notice what the Bible says. It says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Hallelujah. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And I'll be the first to tell you that a man will let you down. A man will let you down. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for the reading of Your Word. And now as we look at it for just a moment, bless it to our ears and move it into our heart that we might share it as we go out into Your world in the coming week uh, and make a difference in Your world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, as I begin to think about this particular topic, every one of us, trust in something or we find someone that we truly trust in now I want to say this to you I would never let you down uh, on purpose but you need to understand that I am not a perfect man I serve a perfect man his name is Jesus and I would never let you down on purpose. And uh, has there been times in my life that, that I've let people down? I'm human, yes. There's been times in my life that I've let people down. And it burdened my heart and it broke my heart that, that I've had to do that from time to time. Not wanting to do it, but I remember there was a time in my life that I kept two calendars. That's a mistake. Don't ever do that. I had a calendar on uh, one desk that uh, I put dates on, and I had a calendar at the office where I work that I put dates on. And I had one speaking engagement. Uh, well, I just had to speak, and I had it listed in two different places on the same day. So I had to let one of those places down. And it wasn't fun. It wasn't. It wasn't good. And for that reason, I stopped keeping two calendars. Of course, I don't keep a calendar anymore. I, I've, I've got an electronic calendar on the phone now that I keep, so I just have that one calendar. But everybody trusts in something or someone. And I want to talk about trust for just a little bit as I think of what it really means. Now, the word in its Hebrew content... Uh, 
means several different things. Uh, the first thing that it means is to have confidence in. And I want to be one that you can confide in, one that you can have confidence in. The second thing that it means in its Hebrew content is to be sure of. To be sure of. And then the third thing that it means in its Hebrew content is to be bold. To be bold. And then the fourth thing that it means in its Hebrew content uh, is to be secure. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a four-point sermon right there. Now, that in itself tells us just a little bit about the whole concept of, of what trust really is. It has to do with who we place our trust in. Well, now we can narrow our options down uh, uh, to what we trust in and who we trust in to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to trust in the Lord no matter what may come your way. Now there are three things that I want to bring to your attention as I begin to think about uh, this particular trust that I am talking about. First of all, we need to trust God in our times of of weakness. And if you've never had any weakness, hold on, because weakness will come. There'll be a time in your life that you will be weak. I remember whenever I was just a young lad, I didn't think that I would ever see weakness come into my life. I was big and bold and strong, and I just knew that I would live my days of being big, bold, and strong. But after working in the yard yesterday, I learned just how weak that I really am. I really did because my knees has been telling me about it today. And uh, so I know that there are times that we need in our weakness to trust in the Lord for our strength. Now the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 4, he said, The Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Now if you want me to really tell you what that breaks down to, into meaning, is He just gives to us strength that just won't quit. He gives us the strength that we need to keep on going and no matter what. You know, I see some people from time to time that they wish that they could do things like they used to do. But yet and still, in the feebleness of their their bodies, they continue to shine for the glory of God. This past week, I walked into a home and visited with a family, and I just knew that it was going to be very burdensome as I walked into this home. But I walked into this home and visited with an individual that picked me up. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. Boy, I tell you what, it's good whenever you walk into those homes where people are sick and they're able to pick you up. And I left that place saying, my goodness, they're weak, but Lord, they're strong, stronger than they'll ever realize. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 9, Paul is speaking and he says that God spoke to him and said, my grace is sufficient. Now what does that mean? It's enough. My grace is enough. It's sufficient for thee. In Isaiah 41.10, the prophet says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Man, it's good to know that God will always be with us when we trust Him. When we trust Him in our weakness. When we trust Him in our strength. When we trust Him with our very lives. When we feel weak. And friends, we all have times when we feel weak and we need to trust Him and, and He'll give to us the strength that we need to carry on no matter what. He'll give us that strength to carry on. Listen, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. 
And I'm grateful for that. No matter how I may find myself, no matter what condition that I may find myself in, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Well, preacher, what are you going to do if tomorrow don't ever come? Tomorrow will always come for the child of God because if today ends, tomorrow in heaven is going to be good. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, it is. It's going to be a glorious day in heaven. Somebody says, well, tomorrow never comes because when it gets here, it's just today. Well, that's true for the here and now. But one day soon, we'll walk into God's tomorrow that He has for our life. And we'll walk into the portals of glory. That song, Ann, that we sang about just a few moments ago, that city of gold, and what a glorious day that's going to be. And then the second thing that I want you to see in this is that in times when we are unsure of our way, we need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to trust Him for directions. Have you ever found yourself lost in not knowing where to go? I think we all have. And you know what? There's not a man in here that will ever stop and ask for directions. What did you say? Did you hear that lady say amen to that? There's not a man in here that would stop and ask for directions. I have sinned and I have asked for directions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a smart man. I remember one time we were going somewhere and I had everything in the GPS and my wife told me, she says, honey, we're not going right. She says, please stop and get directions. And I said, honey, I know where I'm going. It's going to be all right. I'll get us there. Well, on the way there, my son David called me and he said, Daddy, he said, where are you? He said, you were in uh, Cherokee just uh, uh, an hour or so ago. And said, it don't take but about an hour to get over the mountain. You ought to be here. And I said, uh, I said, son, I, I said, I said, I should have, took a left and went over the mountain and I took a right and went to Maggie Valley. And so I, he said, you go on the long way around. I said, it'll take you three hours to get here. I said, well, bless God. I said, we'll get to see some sights we had never got to see before. And it took a while to get there, but we made it. I told her I'd get us there, didn't I? Amen. And I got us there. I got us there. Might have took an extra tank of gas, but we got there. All right. But let me tell you something. There are times that we need to ask God for direction. Now, I love what the psalmist says in Psalm number 37, verses 3 through 5. Now, I'm not going to read all of verse 5. I'm just going to read a portion of it. The Bible says there, Trust in the Lord, and thou shalt be, listen, fed. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Trust in the Lord, and thou shalt be fed. Man, that's good, isn't it? God's going to take care of us, and He's going to feed us if we'll just trust in Him. Probably one of the greatest examples of that is when man and quail rain from heaven to feed a multitude that had left Egypt. It goes on to say, delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. And He'll give you the desire of your heart. And then it goes on to say, commit thy way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He'll bring it to pass. We see three great things in those three verses of Scripture. Trust in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. And then commit your way to the Lord. That's exactly what God wants us to do. Listen, as I begin to think about examples of this, when Israel left Egypt, you need to know that God had a plan for them. He did. God has a plan for them. And you can know this with an assurance this evening. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Now sometimes we try to hurry God up. Because we can't see the plan. God sees the plan. We can't see the plan. So, so we try to help God. 
Anybody ever tried to help God? We try to help God with the plan. But God's got a plan. Uh, I know I've shared with you the story of the little six-year-old girl that I had to minister to uh, who her body was just invaded by tumors and they'd take one tumor out and three would come back in its place and they were all benign tumors but, but they'd take one out and three would come back in that one's place. And that little young lady finally eventually died. Now you don't think that's hard for a chaplain to do to minister to a little child like that. Let me tell you something. My heart broke in my chest. And it was the last time it snowed in South Georgia. And I remember the day that we buried that little girl. And we stood by that little girl's graveside and the ground was white. I mean, it was white. The snow had fallen. Beautiful service. And we buried that little girl. And I remember driving home. And, and I remember stopping in a field and laying the tailgate to my little pickup truck down. And sitting on the tailgate and it freezing and snowing and... I just looked into the heavens and I said, God, what are you doing? Like he didn't know what he was doing. What are you doing? And the Holy Spirit of God spoke to my heart. And this is what God said to my heart. I had a plan for her life. You couldn't see the plan. But I could see the plan. You couldn't see her tomorrows. You wanted to keep her here. But now she's with me. And she's well. God had a plan. God had a plan. And God's got a plan for your life. You see, God had a plan for Israel. The problem was Israel, even though they knew a little bit about the plan, they didn't know exactly what the plan was. I mean, stop and think about it. They were in territory they had never been in before. They were walking around a mountain and in a wilderness and they were headed in a direction that they had never been in before. God promised that He would guide them every step of the way. And let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, God will follow you every step of the way as you live your life on this side of eternity if you will just let Him do the leading. So the same promise is made available to us today. Let God lead and direct your life and you won't ever get lost. <laughs> you won't ever get lost. You won't. Life with God is an exciting journey. Did you hear me? Life with God is an exciting journey. Now we may not know what will come our way, and most of the times we don't, but you can be assured that He will lead you, He will guide you, He will direct you, and He'll carry you where you need to go. But the key to that happening is for you to commit your ways to Him and allow Him to direct your path. Man, He's the only true GPS system in the world today. He is. All these satellite GPS that we got, they may be pretty good but they'll lead you astray sometimes. If you don't believe me, you go to the mountains of North Carolina and try to use one of them. I'll assure you, they'll lead you astray. They will. And honey, don't ever put on there that you don't want to go down no dirt road. You will be led astray because it's going to try to take you the quickest way. But hey, the quickest way to heaven is to walk through Jesus. Amen. I like what Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says here, Trust in the Lord with all, listen, with all thine heart. And then it goes on to say, And lean not to thine own understanding. You see, that's where the problem comes in. Most of us, most of us, like to lean to our own understanding. We do. Have you ever just looked at somebody that knew everything? Come on. Be honest with me. 
Ed, I'm going to tell her. You said that. <laughs> hey. You're pretty brave, but she's not here. <laughs> Listen. We all have known what we call know-it-alls. But I truly know a, a know-it-all. And his name is Jesus. He knows it all. He knows it all. But he's the only one I know that really knows it all. The only one. You know, I used to think that I knew a lot. I've been studying this Bible for a lot of years. And I won't get into how many but a lot of years. But it utterly amazes me sometimes that I can pick this book up and find something that I've missed for 35 years. And I'll, I'll just stop in my tracks and ultimately say to God, God, how have I missed that for 35 years? It's amazing. That's why it's a living book. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Man, that's the key to having trust is acknowledging Him. Listen, and the Bible says, and He shall direct thy paths. He shall direct thy paths. Listen, when it seems the darkest... That's always when we trust Him the most. Have you ever noticed that? You know, that might be why some of us have some dark days from time to time. When life seems its darkest, that's when we trust Him the most. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a light. Thy word is a light unto my path. Man, I'm proud of that. Because I've told you that I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> and I've told you why that I'm scared of the dark. It's my granddaddy's fault. Yes, Ed, it's a shift thing. I ain't scared of the dark. You would have been if you'd have been Buford's grand youngin. <laughs> Granddaddy. There was a time, listen boys and girls, there was a time that we didn't have all those games that y'all play. There was a time that we used to go outside and play. We'd ride bicycles. We'd play tag. We had played baseball, hide and seek, if we could count that high. Having a good time. And hey, we loved the outdoors so much that we didn't even want to come back in the house. And when it get dark, we'd turn the front porch light on at Granddaddy's house. And we would ease out the front door. And we'd go just as far as the light would go, and that's where we'd stop. When the light stopped, we stopped. Yeah, we stopped. And one day, my daddy and my granddaddy, granddaddy slipped out the back door with a white sheet and come around the side of the house and had my daddy to turn the front porch light off. There was four of us boys. My mama's sister had two grandboys, or had two boys, granddaddy had two grandboys from, from mama's sister, and then mama had two. There was four of us grandboys. Y'all ever saw four boys go in the screen door at the same time? <laughs> we like to tore that door off the hinges. And I've been scared of the dark ever since. Thy word is a light. So when I get scared, I just open the flashlight up. That's God's flashlight. Y'all know that's God's flashlight. It is. This Bible is God's flashlight. 
to our heart. But listen, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got the living flashlight in your heart and in your life. Jesus will always light up the path and give you direction in your life if you'll just trust in Him. Now the third and last thing that I want to bring to your attention is this. We need to trust God in times when we don't understand and there'll be times that's going to come in your life that you just don't understand. And when you don't understand what's going on in your life, just trust Him anyway. Just trust Him anyway. Trust in His loving care. Now let me tell you something. I love the book of Romans. I love the book of Hebrews. I don't know of a book in the book that I don't love. I love them all. But there's a verse of Scripture in Romans that just reaches out and pulls me into it. And, and I love this verse. Now, it's not what I would call my life verse. Jeremiah 29, 11 is my life verse. But, but this verse ministers to me. Listen to it. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Now it doesn't say that all things are going to always be good. How many of you has ever had anything bad to happen in your life? I think just about everybody in here, we've had something bad to happen in our life. God won't ever forget you. But He will take, He will take those things that the devil throws out at you for bad, and He will turn those things around and work them together for your good. But the key to those things being worked together for your good is you've got to trust it into His care. The problem with most of us is we just don't trust it into His care. We live in a fix-it society. Instead of trusting things into the care of God, we try to fix it. And most of the time, when we try to fix it, we just mess it up that much more. God works all things together for good to them that love Him, to the called according to His purpose. I like what Job said in Job 13, 15. Listen, Job had so much trust in God, he said, though He slay me, yet will I trust Him. Now if you want me to put that in everyday English, Job said, even if it kills me, I'm still going to trust Him. It's when things that just don't make sense to us, we find ourselves having problems to trust Him. When things just don't make too much sense to us, that's when it's the hardest. To trust Him. But that's when we ought to trust Him. That's when we ought to trust Him. Because we want... You know why? You know why it's that, that way? Do you know why that, that when things just don't make sense to us that it's hardest to trust Him? Do you know why? Because we want to be able to figure everything out. We do. I don't know why we're built that way, but we are. We want to be able to figure everything out and then trust Him. But if, if you think about it, that's not trust at all. If we can figure it out, we don't have to trust. We must trust Him. Trust Him for strength. 
when you're weak. Trust Him for direction when you're lost. Trust His loving care as He reaches into your life. And simply trust Him all the time. All the time. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 62, 8. Trust in Him at all times. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Isaiah 12, 2. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. He is my strength. God is my song. God is my bread. God is my water. God is my salvation. The greatest story I guess in all of the Scripture of God being all of those things is found in John's Gospel chapter 6 where Jesus took five little loaves from a little boy and two fish. Every time I think about that story, I think about that little fella who was a special child that actually was grown, but I called him a special child. We were doing devotions with that group. They would clean our church at Spring Head when I was pastor there. And it was always on a Thursday morning, and we tried to provide uh, snacks for them. And uh, they always wanted me to come down and tell them a little Bible story. So I bought... I bought a little little child's storybook. And I was reading the story of the five loaves and two fish that, that particular day before we had Kool-Aid and pound cake. And uh, this one little fellow was sitting in the, in, in the audience. He was a very special, special man, really. Uh, he, raised, he just kept raising his hand. And I just finally looked at him and I said, you got something you want to say. What is it? He said, preacher, I know just what kind of bread and fish it was. And it was tun bean bread and catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Broke up the meeting. <laughs> I don't know what kind of bread it was. I don't know what kind of fish it was. But Jesus took it, blessed it, broke it, and fed 5,000 men plus the women and plus the children. All we got to do is trust God no matter what. Listen, before we can have confidence in God, before we can trust Him at all times, we've got to give ourselves a spiritual checkup and see where we are with Him. Listen, if we're not saved by the grace of God, how can we trust in somebody we haven't believed in? You can't. You've got to be saved. And you know, I look out and most of you, maybe except some of our children, you've made that decision in your life. You've trusted Christ as your Savior. Now just trust Him to carry you through the rest of this journey called life in the here and now, and you are assured life forevermore because you've trusted Him as Savior. So you're going to live forever. But trust Him in the here and now while you're trotting on this journey called life. Now I don't know how you feel, but... Once you have complete trust in God, there's nothing that will ever come your way that He won't carry you through it. Nothing. Now, it may take time. We live in such an instant society that we don't like to think about it taking time. But you just trust in Him and know no matter what may come your way, He will see you through this world and give you a home in His world to come. How beautiful heaven's going to be. Amen? Amen. Y'all stand with me. Father, we thank You for Your Word and help us, O oh God, to take it to heart.
and trust in you no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen.